Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the third in a series of video tutorials on how to make a platform game in Unity 3D. Now, since our last uh, tutorial, you'll notice I've built up quite a bit uh, of the rest of the level that we were building. Uh, the reason for that, like I say last time, is to basically um, avoid unnecessary uh, time on uh, these tutorials. So if you've not uh, built up as far as this um, in the tutorial, which is um, just like our level that we already had planned out in our first tutorial, uh, then pause this tutorial now and uh, try and get up to this, or up to a point where you want to be up to. You don't have to make it exactly like this. Okay, so in this tutorial what we'll be looking at is um, we'll be putting this finish line in up here, building the rest of this little area up here, and we'll also be putting in some um, sort of gems or tokens or something to collect, and there will be some programming involved in this episode too. So let's get ourselves started. What we'll need to do is up here, the finish will be here. So what I'm actually going to do at the moment is I'm going to take this square and I'm going to duplicate, which is Control D, hold Control and pull it out this way. Now the simple thing with this is if you remember we already created our finish one by one, um, I think it was in the first tutorial. So it's just simply a case of dragging and dropping here. So you'll see we now have our finish line. Uh, next what we'll do is we will quickly build up the rest of this, so hold control, press D to duplicate as always, and just fill in all the blanks where they need uh, filling in, like so. As always with Unity there isn't um, too much difficulty going on here. Um, I think that's, that is the rest of it complete I believe, um, should we check? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six squares next to the finish, and we have six right there. So all we need to do is, I'm not going to be too precise with this, um, just quickly finish up um, all these side bits. Uh, again, nothing too special. I'm, I'm probably not going to finish every little bit at the moment. Um, I'll probably do that um, when the tutorial's ended. Um, so if we quickly take this and pull it up this way, take it this way, that one. Yeah, there's uh, two little bits just there and there to fill in, but I'll, I'll deal with them uh, some other time. You can fill them in now if you want. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so essentially we have our very first level or area uh, built. So let's zoom out to touch, and that's it. So what we'll do now is let's turn our camera around. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we will put in a uh, some sort of collectible. <coughs> so what we'll do is rather than coins or tokens, we'll put some sort of um, square gem. Uh, so we'll play with the uh, rotation a little as well. So if you go to game object, create other, and cube. And what we'll do is we'll put this to zero, 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 and we'll change the scale to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0 0.25. There we go. So. All we'll do now is here on the cube, right click, rename, and we'll call this one Red Gem 1. So let's um, focus on it. Let's pull it up slightly and maybe back down to, let's say, about there. So over here in your respector window, on the rotation on the x-axis type in 45 and over here on the y-axis again 45 
and it creates it on a sort of angle as you can see <clears throat> okay next thing to do is if you right I tell you what if sorry click here in materials you'll see we already imported a red texture well for um, convenience sake you'll be able to find these three colors on our website so what I'm going to do is take these two and drag and drop them in the same window just here I'll also take the red one my apologies so this material just to double check should have that pulled over there All right uh, create uh, material and call this one token 002 and we'll put the green one on this one I think and one more create material token 003 so we have three different colored tokens use the blue there okay next thing to do the red material simply drag and drop onto our cube okay next thing to do is we need to create a script which will spin it because if we play and have a look over at it it's not doing a whole lot it doesn't look great so to do that right click create javascript and we'll call this one gem underscore spin now double click the file and with any luck it will open in mono develop now mono develop is a program within unity itself technically where you can uh, program in several different languages which Unity can read. Um, I won't be dealing too much with Mono Develop in this episode because um, there isn't too much that we'll, we will be programming. Um, there is only a couple of lines to, um, to do. So when it opens you'll see you have basically a white screen and a few um, lines of code already. Don't worry too much about all this here. It's um, it's not worth thinking about at the moment. So your first thing to do here is to delete every line of uh, code it already has given you. And on the first line, type function update open bracket close bracket and then curly bracket open. Now note that the uh, function is lowercase and on update it has a capital U. It is case sensitive, so you have to be absolutely sure that you are typing it correctly. If you were typing a capital F there on the function, the script wouldn't work. If you were type a lower case U there, <clears throat> it, it uh, wouldn't work again. So on the next line, you have transform, as we want to transform the object that this script will be applied to. And we want to dot rotate with a capital R open bracket and now we type in 0 comma 5 comma 0 comma and space dot world with a capital S and a capital W close bracket and a semicolon now uh, a semicolon is essential as it essentially means that it is the end of that line of code and it can understand that that is the end and on the next line down, it is just a closed curly bracket. So now, save. Once the script is saved, head back into Unity, but don't close Mono Develop just yet in case we get any errors. All you need to do now is this script drag and drop onto the cube, and then with any luck, when we press play, we have a spinning cube. Not perfect, but it gives the impression of movement. So, 
our next thing to do is to give it some sort of um, radiance. So we'll play with some lighting. Go to game object, create other, and point light. Now over here you'll notice the uh, position is already 0, 0, 0. So if we right click on it over here, rename, and we'll call this red gem glow. <coughs> Enter. Now all you need to do is drag and drop this red gem glow onto red gem 1. And that will put it as a child under the parent object in the hierarchy. So to see it, you click the arrow. To hide it, click the arrow again. Hidden. OK, so all we need to do now is over here <coughs> on the colour, we'll change the colour to a nice red glow. And as you can see, you can see that um, due to other um, numbers within here, it is quite a large range on the glow. But we'll keep it as a nice red. Click the X. And then drag. Sorry. Not on there. There. That should do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Change the range to, let's say, maybe two. Mm, three. Three should do it. So when we press play, we have a nice sort of red glow. And I think that'll do just nicely. Next thing to do is let's just turn our angle around. Let's duplicate the entire object. Control D to duplicate. And then we move on the, um, let's see which actor shall we use. Change on the Z to maybe three. No, too far. Two. Duplicate again. And let's put on the Z axis. Um, six. And that looks okay there. So now we have, as you can see, a few gems. Now, it's entirely up to you whether you want to have um, cubes or whether you want to change it to a coin or token. Um, it really is your choice. I'm just using a cube at the moment as I have used uh, tokens in a different tutorial. I just want to show different, well, different things within tutorials, if I'm honest. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this red gem, <coughs> I'm going to duplicate, and on the x-axis I'm going to put the position as minus 2, so it puts it at the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the green material that we have, and I'm going to apply it to our cube. So over here you'll see we can put the uh, tech the material here. So drag and drop over here. No, it's not quite working. It's been a bit awkward. <laughs> okay, my apologies. So if we go here, we'll do it the good old fashioned way. Zoom in and we'll drag and drop. Well I would drag and drop if it wasn't playing around. Tell you what, let's delete that red gem glow because that is preventing us from doing it. There we go. Green is applied. So game object, create other, point light. So again, if we right click, rename, and we'll call this green glow. And we'll also rename this to green gem 1. So we need to drag and drop 
green glow onto green gem and here in the position zero out all the axis so it is in the center of our gem now the color will have as a nice sort of green glow which would make uh, a lot of sense and the range we'll have as three much the same as um, our other ones yep we had three on there actually we'll rename this one apologies to green gem glow just to keep it in line with everything else so now we have a green gem which should also spin and it does so essentially we've used the same uh, setup we used on this original cube to duplicate and then modify with this one so what I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to duplicate the game and we'll change the x-axis to 2 duplicate the game and we'll change to 3 didn't duplicate. Duplicate and change that to two. There we go. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is we will create the final colour, which is the blue. Now we use the same principle that we used uh, to create the green. So if we duplicate and put the position, we'll put this as maybe six over here. Now in here, just for convenience, I'm going to delete the green gem glow. And I'm going to drag and drop this blue material onto our cube. As you can see, it's applied. It's a nice light blue colour. So we will rename, call this blue gem 1. And game object, create other, and point light. So if we drag and drop our point light onto blue gem, and then rename blue gem glow, we'll change the color to a nice light blue color. About there, that looks fine. And we will also zero out the position on the axis <clears throat> and don't forget to change the range to three so now when we press play <clears throat> you'll see we have some collectibles which not great but it's a start so what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to put this one on the Z axis as let's say 3, uh, duplicate a game, put that as 1, and I think I'll duplicate a green one and we'll put the position on this as let's see maybe 8 and 0 maybe one more red as well duplicate we'll put that as 7 no we'll put we'll put this one as 7 and we'll put the z axis as minus 2 Now you can carry on and plant several more gems around, um, but at the moment uh, it, it probably there's no point in it at the moment because in possibly the next episode or episode after <coughs> we'll be looking at uh, making the tokens disappear when you pick them up, <coughs> and then hopefully we should uh, keep a score count as well when we do. So we will leave this tutorial there for now. In the next episode, uh, there will be more scripting as we'll be looking at making our finish line active and taking us to another area. 
and using the same method we'll also be looking at creating um, a death sort of um, script so for example when we press play and fall off we need something to happen rather than our player just fall down into infinity into oblivion uh, and what we'll do there is if he falls off we'll put him straight back here at the start but that does require um, a little bit of scripting but it's not too difficult so oh uh, yes we will leave it there for now um, as I said earlier <clears throat> all of our assets that we use uh, in tutorials and all the scripts are available on our website uh, which is in the description below uh, if you have any questions or if you get stuck uh, please get in touch or please leave a comment um, and we'll do our best to help in any way and um, other members who watch these videos tutorials as well they'll probably help I've seen quite a few people give out um, help and advice in some of my other videos so uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time